Hi one, hope you are doing well from whatever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, Raila Odinga has announced that there will be mass action in this country from Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. But we know very well that Ruto came out very strongly to condemn and he insisted that there will be no mass action in this country. In fact, in his own word, Ruto said that I will not allow demonstration to continue in this country. That was William Ruto. And uh, we saw Kidura Kindika coming out also strongly to insist that there will be no mass action in this country. In fact, if I quote him, this is what he said, eh? Katika inchi ya Kenya, hakuta kuwa na maandamano tena. Hatuta kubali mtu yeyote na yule anafikiria ni mchezo ajaribu. In fact, even Kenyans went further to make a joke on Kidura Kindiki's voice when he's speaking. And that was when really he had, he had irritated everyone by the fact that they are trying to stop mass action. We will not allow any violent demonstrations ever again in the Republic of Kenya. Mimi niko na wewe macho kwa macho tutakutana wewe sasa maandamano haiwezi tena kufanyika katika hii taifa letu la Kenya hiyo wanasema Wednesday hiyo wanasema so even up to yesterday the Kenya Kwanza government had insisted that they will not allow mass action but then Kidure Kindiki was at Kamwa Catholic Church that is in Tarakanith County and uh, during the service when he got to address the mass Kidure Kindiki seemingly is a man who is now changing his tone from sitakubali maandamano to maandamano itakubaliwa lakini iwe kwa amani na kuna masaya ya kufanya maandamano so the question is eh, what really made Kidure Kindiki to change his statement remember Kidure Kindiki is the CS4 interior this is a man who is coordinating closely with the police officers, Kome, and the team. So he's, a, he's the leader there. And when he speaks, it means he's speaking the mind of the government or what the government has decided to do. And let me quote him. This is what he said. The government respect and uphold the constitution and all its provision, including the freedom of association, and assemble the right to demonstrate, picket, and petition. That's Kizura Kindiki. While the government has not banned public rally and the gathering, the law clearly allows such rallies to be held between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So Kizura Kindiki is saying that mass action can be there, but within the time that is mentioned in the in the constitution, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That means anything beyond that, it will not be mass action. So the question is, what made Kedure Kindiki to change his mind? Before we answer that question, just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our returning subscribers, I say thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now, we know there is no any government that is comfortable with the demonstrations, but above all, the issue is that you have to listen to Kenyans and solve their problem. So, even William Samai Ruto is not comfortable with the mass action, and in fact, he is the most panicked leader ever we have seen in this country when it comes to mass action. The reasons are obvious. He has not delivered he is not planning to deliver, but he has a plan to give promises to Kenyans. So, why the change of voice? Number one, we saw the United Nations writing a letter to the government. And in their letter, they, was, they were 
they were addressing the government and, uh, and giving a warning to make sure that the people who are demonstrating are being protected. We read that letter here. Demonstrators must be protected. Properties and lives must be protected according to Kenyan constitution. So they were even telling the government or authorities to protect those who are going to demonstrate on, th on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Because of that, William Ruto and his government are taking a U-turn on the push to force a stop on mass action. UN warning. So in as much they were making all that noise, they are now subdued. Number two, we have seen how the government has tried to stop mass action, which turned, turned out to be so much violent. What Ruto is realizing is that if he stops mass action, that's when he will be calling more Kenyans to go on the street. And how will he stop this mass action? When you announce that there will be no mass action, it means you want to use police force to stop people from demonstrating. And once you do so, then the people come up in big numbers. Then it means you have encouraged more people to go to the street to demonstrate. Now, with this move alone, which is point number three, we saw police officers being overwhelmed by the demonstrators. To an extent, they throw tear gas. Those who are demonstrating, they return the tear gas. Police are even forced to run for their lives. It has been evidently clear that to some extent, police officers have been overpowered by the people who are demonstrating. Because of that, Ruto is learning that even to some extent, they are risking the lives of these police officers when they go and uh, give such orders to stop mass action. Because what Kenyans are doing is in line with the constitution, demonstrate. And what the government need to do is to give security to both demonstrators and the properties. But what they are doing is opposite of that. Then it turned out to be more chaotic and the police officers find themselves in a very dangerous situation. Now you have to run for your life. Just look at a sign where a police officer is running, being chased by Kenyans. This one is giving a bad image to the government that they cannot govern. Because of this, William Ruto is deciding that mass action should continue. <laughs> Stopping mass action means you are literally preparing to kill Kenyans. Remember the UN warning about protecting lives. And now you say that you, will, you want to stop mass action. That means many people will come to the street. But police are prepared to kill. Because how do you stop mass action? It is going to be a fight between police officers and the Kenyans who are demonstrating. In this fight, the only armed individuals here are police officers. And if you want to force people to stop demonstrating, you force them how? It means police have to now start using live bullet on Kenyans. That means in every day we are going to have mass action if Ruto want to use force to stop it. In every day, 100 people might be killed or more. So if people will come on Wednesday for mass action, then the police, up, police officers end up killing 100 people. They come on Thursday, police officers come out to kill another 100 and above. They come on Friday, you also kill another 100 and above. That means in three days' time, the government would have ended up killing close to 400 people. Now look at that. Then we have ICC are watching, as me wrote a letter, and you might not see them here actively, but silently, they might be collecting data. Look at what UN has done, writing that letter, that means they are also addressing to ICC. So if they are here, they are watching carefully, they are collecting data. Then you end up executing close to 400 lives in three days' time. Tell me if you're not preparing another case in ISIS for you. 
because of this, William Ruto is founding a reason to let mass action happen in this country. Otherwise, people like Kedure Kindiki, Kome, Akina Gashago, and you want to police or Kuja Kua, what to a cat to Mandamano, they will have a case to answer. So maybe they are sitting with Ruto and telling him, please, we are heading to a problem. In as much you don't like, we don't have option. Let mass action continue. And uh, another point that I'm seeing here is a question we have to ask ourselves. Why is it that when Ruto called for a, a PG in the house, which was an emergency meeting, this P, in this PG they resolved that they are going to mobilize in their various constituencies. The members of parliament allied to Kenya Kwanzaa have been asked to stop mass action by every means. The question is, how are you going to stop people who are demonstrating and they have a message to the government? That was the question. So, it is imagining that in this push, there is a possibility that the government itself is organizing to cause chaos during mass action and maybe try to kill some police officers. For example, if they end up killing maybe 10 or 20 police officers in the mass action and then put a blame on Azmio, the Umoja leadership. That you people said you want to demonstrate, we allowed you to come and demonstrate, but you have end up killing 10 or 20 police officers. So they find a reason to justify a move to stop mass action. Because then, them themselves, when I to kill a police, kumi, Yes, yes, she da kuba. Ata to kiwa police shirini, akuna she da kuba. Nakini watapata sababu, ya kuja sasa ku to deal with the demonstrators that mercilessly. Because now they'll be saying that these people are finishing police officers. It's no longer demonstration. It is a fight against the government. So maybe there is a plan by this regime to cause such kind of chaos, kill police officers, put a blame on Azimio leaders and those who are demonstrating. Then from there, they find a reason to deal mercilessly with those who are demonstrating. These are a possible reason. I don't know your views, but let us meet in the comment section for continuation of this conversation. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to me up this far, and see you in our next video.